Welcome to our review on breaking distance and stopping distance. First thing we need to know then is the definition of the term breaking distance. And it is the distance traveled in the time it takes from putting your foot on the brake to coming to a stop. The key bit there is the distance traveled. So don't miss that bit out and just talk about the time it takes from putting the foot on the brake to come into a stop because that wouldn't be a braking distance. So distance traveled in the time it takes from putting your foot on the brake to coming to a stop. An old favorite question of theirs was to ask you to list two factors which would increase the braking distance. And people used to throw away the marks on this question all the time because rather than actually stating factors that would increase the braking distance, they went a bit vague in their answers. So when it specifies increase, make sure that you do get specific in your answer. So increased speed or going faster, wet roads, icy roads, poor brake condition, poor tire condition. Don't write down the condition of the brakes and the condition of the tires because they could be in brilliant condition. That wouldn't increase your braking distance. You've got to be specific and say poor tire condition, poor brake conditions, icy roads, increased speed. The second term we need to know the definition of is the stopping distance. And the stopping distance is the total distance traveled from the moment the driver sees a problem to coming to a complete stop. So in reality, the stopping distance is the thinking distance plus the braking distance. And at the bottom, I've given you a little section from the highway code that shows you what happens with thinking distance and what happens with the braking distance. One of the questions they could ask you is one like this. Use the equation of motion to calculate the braking distance for a car traveling at 22.3 meters per second if the acceleration of the car is minus 6.6 .6 meters per second squared. Because we're talking about a calculation question, the first thing we do is highlight, underline, circle or jot down the important bits of information there, which I've done in red. Then we're going to use our equation of motion. Final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared is two times acceleration times distance in order to find the distance. So what we need to do, rearrange first of all. So we end up with distance equals the final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared divided by two times the acceleration. We can then substitute in the values. So what we're looking at, the final velocity, if we're braking, will be zero, minus our initial velocity, 22.3, remembering to square them. And then we divide that by two times minus 6.6. .6. The minus sign is important. Once we've done that, we get our answer of minus 37.7. And again, remember to include the sign. The sign is important. The last thing we need to consider is the relationship between speed and these different distances. So looking at the thinking distance, hopefully you can see, first of all, that's a linear relationship. So what we can see from the bottom right is that for every 10 miles an hour, we increase our speed by the thinking distance increases by three meters. The same isn't true for the braking distance, but when we have a 10 meter increase between 20 and 30, then the braking distance increases by eight meters. But when we have a 10 mile an hour increase between 60 and 70, then it increases by 20 meters. So make sure that where you can, you include numbers in your answer. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can define the terms braking distance and stopping distance. You can recall factors that would affect the braking distance and you can estimate the distances from different speeds when given information in the question.